comes to us today from the 16th chapter of Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So names are kind of important things, aren't they? I mean, it'd be really awkward if we didn't have names. It's interesting when parents find out they're going to have a baby, they sit down and try to figure out what they're going to call this thing. Sometimes they pick names that are family names. And that can get dicey because you've got to make sure you balance all that kind of stuff, make sure everybody's equally represented. Sometimes they don't want to go down that path at all like my parents did, and they picked Jonathan Allen because that wasn't a family name at all. So both grandmothers were mad. Some parents wait until after the baby's born to get a look at them. What do you look like? Do you look like a Karen, a Mike, a Steve, something like that? Later on, as we grow up, start having our friends and trying to form our own identity, maybe apart from our parents, we adopt nicknames or we accept them that are given to us. And they help to form a part of our identity. Today's gospel lesson is really all about names. The disciples identifying a name Messiah with Jesus, and Jesus renaming Peter, what do you call him? The Rock. Isn't that cool? I mean, wouldn't you want to be called The Rock? I'm going to keep saying that so we can tag The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, in our live stream. Maybe he'll comment. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Come to grace. We know the rock. Worth the shot. I will say it is rather interesting how this Peter getting named the rock business comes about. You see, the thing is, Jesus came to share in our humanity, and that's, that's all of it. And I think there's a little bit of a joke going on here. If you remember back a few weeks, we had a gospel lesson about the disciples being in a boat. There was a storm going on, and Jesus was taking his morning walk. You were supposed to laugh a little bit there. He's walking on the water, people. Let's do some Bible study here. And, and Peter goes, hey, Jesus, l- let me do that with you. And, and he does, but, but then what happens? He sunk. Now, what happens if you take a rock and you throw it on the water? I think Jesus is having a little bit of fun here with Peter. Hey, Rocky. Remember that time you sunk Rocky? A little bit of humor, but all jokes aside, this is a really profound gospel lesson. And the names are important, including the name it starts out with. Jesus and his disciples arrive in Caesarea Philippi. And that's not there as filler, that's not there by accident, that's there on purpose to develop this story even more. Now I am sure you're all scholars on Caesarea Philippi, right? You're all brushed up on this, you saw this was the reading this morning coming to church and you thought, I'm going to open my ancient textbooks and I'm going to make sure I know all about Caesarea Philippi. I'm sure you did that, right? But, but for the few people who didn't, I'm going to just fill them in, okay? 
and you can just sit there superior in your, in your knowledge. So Caesarea Philippi is named after a couple people. The first one it's named after is Caesar. Pretty obvious, the founder of a salad we all like to eat. <laughs> I'm kidding, not that. The Caesars were the most powerful people on earth in Jesus' day. They controlled the entirety of the known world. They sat on the most powerful government in the world, and they controlled the most awe-inspiring army anyone had ever seen. If Caesar wanted you dead, guess what? You was going to be dead. If Caesar wanted you to disappear in the middle of the night, you're gone. And unsurprisingly, Caesar named a lot of places after himself. That's pretty, pretty cool, right? I mean, I'm still looking for Jonathan Land. <laughs> Haven't gotten there yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So he named this place after himself, and you probably aren't shocked to find out that he built a shrine to himself there. He really was the most humble person ever, and he'd tell you about it all day long. <laughs> so there, in Caesarea Philippi, is a shrine to Caesar, and the powerful government that he controls, and the awe-inspiring army that he sits atop. Now, there's this other guy, a little closer to home. You've heard of Herod the Great before? Well, Herod the Great had a son. What do you think his name might be? Philip. I wonder how he got that. Huh. So Philip was Herod's son, and he also had some claims on Caesarea. And to really drive those claims home, you've got to name it after yourself. So now we've got Caesarea Philippi. Now, Philip really was a little bit more of a humble guy than Caesar. So he wasn't going to build a shrine to himself. Instead, he really liked the god Pan. Now, I know you're brushed up on Pan, but he's a nature god dealing with life and fertility and the powers of the earth and all that kind of stuff. So he built a shrine to the god Pan right there next to Caesar's shrine. Getting a theme here now, aren't you? Now, there's one other feature about Caesarea Philippi that also has some important stuff going on. There's this deep, dark, cavernous tunnel. So deep, so dark, that people began to associate it with the gate of Hades, the place of death. So you've got these three powers at work in Caesarea Philippi. That of Caesar, and government, and military might. That of the god Pan, and the powers of the earth, and life, and fertility. And then, the entrance to hell itself, the powers of death. So you have a lot vying for your attention right here in Caesarea Philippi. And it's after... John the Baptist is beheaded. And prior to Jesus taking his disciples to Jerusalem, where he'll suffer on the cross and die, that he takes his disciples here. And in the midst of all of these powers that vie for your attention and your devotion, Jesus asks his disciples a couple of questions. First, who do people say that I am? And the second, more importantly, but who do you say that I am? And Peter replies, you're Jesus. You're the Messiah. You see, there's a lot in our world that vies for our attention. There's a lot of loud, clanging cymbals and noisy gongs saying, look at me, give me your attention, give me your devotion. Anybody got a smartphone? 
Probably most of you. You know, there's a lot of stuff on that that vies for your attention. You get bombarded every day with thousands of ads. In short, telling you, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You don't look good enough. You don't make enough money. You could be thinner. You could be taller. You could be all kinds of things that you're not because you're not measuring up. In addition, you get bombarded by all sorts of things saying, pull for this sports team, vote for this candidate, go to this school, do this job, and this will give your life meaning. It will make it immeasurably better if only you give your attention and your devotion to these areas. And we know this to be true, right? This is something we experience every single day. So we may not find ourselves in the literal Caesarea Philippi, but we literally do live in a similar context to the one Jesus and his disciples found themselves in today. And so in the midst of all of that, that still small voice of Jesus comes to us each and every day. But who do you say that I am? And that's a, a choice, that's a, a calling, that's an opportunity for us to answer that question for ourselves again and again every single day. You are Jesus. You are the Messiah. You are for me. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, uh, some of my Baptist friends asked me uh, when I accepted Jesus as my Savior. And I love to tell them at my baptism when I was a month old. I don't like that answer. It doesn't work for them. But it is true, that's, that's when Jesus became a Savior for me. But the calling we Lutherans have, that Luther reminded us of, is to walk wet to remember our baptism every single day. To answer that question, you are Jesus, you are the Messiah, you are for me every single day. Now some days I do a really bad job of it. I know that's a shock to hear, right? Some days I'm challenged by it. Some days I don't want to be bothered with Jesus. You ever have days like that? Imagine every once in a while. Because being bothered by Jesus is kind of hard. We're going to get to that in just a second. Hold on to that thought. In other days, I do a much better job with it. Yes, Jesus, you are Jesus. You are the Messiah. You are for me. Because you see, the thing is, when you identify Jesus as Messiah, things start to change. And they change in profound ways. You get a new name. You're Jonathan. You're Joan, you're Caroline, you're Knowles, you're Emily. You're a child of God, and you are a rock. That's not just a name for Peter, I don't think. That's a name for all of us, and it means hard work. As you see, there's something else that Caesarea Philippi is known for. In the midst of all of those shrines to powers that try to make claims on our life, in the midst of a tunnel down to a place of death, there are also these mighty rock walls, almost like a fortress, a place of safety and security. And out of those rock walls comes a spring, fresh spring water that fills the Jordan River and nourishes the land around. You see, when Jesus gave the name Rock to Peter, and subsequently the name Rock to you, he's got that in mind. A place of safety and security that nourishes the world around. And this is where your work gets really hard. Because you're called, as Rocky, to not be a hard-headed person, 
but rather a place of safety and security that nourishes the world around. Because you see, there's not a lot of that in our world if we look around. There's a lot of death and destruction, a lot of division and hatred. And yet in the midst of that, we are called to be rocks, rocks of safety and security that nourish the world around. Only here's the challenge. We fail a lot. Just like Peter, we slip beneath the waves, crying out for Jesus. Take a look around you. Go ahead. I mean it seriously. Take a look around. We got some empty pews, don't we? We got work to do. You see, unfortunately, we Christians have come up short time and again. And there are people who are scared to enter the church. There are people who don't feel safe and secure here. There are people who, again, will never darken our door. That's work that we have to do. Do we live out our Christian lives just here inside these four walls? You're looking at me like you want the answer, but I think you know it, right? Where do we live out our Christian lives? Out there. Going out to the people who will never darken our door. Going out to the people who don't feel safe and secure here. Going out to the people who don't feel welcomed or loved pouring out our lives for our neighbors around us, watering and making beautiful all the land that's all around us, all the people that are around us. That's the hard work that we've got to do. And it's not going to be easy. All around you, are the noisy gongs and loud clanging cymbals vying for your attention and your devotion. And some days, we give it to them. But in the midst of that, there is that voice coming to us, inviting us to remember our baptism, inviting us to walk wet, inviting us to answer for ourselves this day, who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? You are Jesus. You are the Messiah. And in return, you get a name, Rocky, a person of safety and security in the midst of an increasingly unsafe world, one who waters and cares for those around them, providing for all those in need, and reaching out our arms in love, just like Jesus reached out his arms on the cross for the entire world. So who do you say that Jesus is? Amen.